Stop motion is a great little way to make animations from any kind of things that you've got lying around. You can use clay, you can use like Play-Doh, you can use sticks and, and pencils, you can even draw and turn it into a stop motion. All it requires is a camera, so you can take multiple photos and string them together into an animation. To actually create the animation portion of this, we're going to use Wii Video, which provides some additional editing options that we might not have with simpler software. So let's jump in and take a look at what this is going to look like inside of Wii Video. So here I've logged into Wii Video already, and I've taken some photos already. So I'll show you what that's going to look like here. If I were to jump back to my folder where I've already created this, this is the setup that I used. So the things you're going to want are going to be some kind of backdrop, usually a green screen. And in this case, I'm just using a $2 tablecloth from, you know, Dollarama. So as long as you've got a solid color in your background, you're going to be able to go ahead and take that color and just strip it right out of your video and drop in whatever background you want. If you've already got a backdrop of some kind, go ahead and use that, of course. But if you want to be able to drop in other footage and other backgrounds, you need a solid color for it to work with. The next thing you're going to need is some decent lighting. You don't want sort of shadows and things on your backdrop. I've got probably more than ideal here. Um, and you also don't really want what I've done in this sample photo here is this strong white space up at the top where the bulb, the light is, is hitting directly on that spot. You want to be able to kind of diffuse the light and get an even lighting, whether that's multiple lights or you put sort of a sheet or filter of some kind over the light to diffuse it a little bit. But you don't want those hot spots in your background. I'm using a little bit of modeling clay here in this uh, example. And again, you could use really anything that you can manipulate and move around. Uh, the only hiccup would be if I'm using, say, uh, action figures or something, is that they need to be able to stand and hold the different positions that you're going to put them in on their own. I can't have my hands in the shot at all. And in this case, I'm going with a Chromebook. Now, you can use uh, really any kind of camera. You can use an iPhone, a, a Chromebook, a you know regular laptop, a DSLR, you know, actual photography camera, uh, just about anything, as long as it will take still photos and you can set it up in a way on a tripod or a mount or, or block it in some way so that, that camera will not move. You want it to stay absolutely static the entire time so that its um, subject matter is always in the same place on the frame when you take that photo. So those are the big things you need. A decent backdrop, good lighting, a camera, and some subject that you're actually going to be taking your photographs of. So with that said, I've got a bunch of photos that I took as I animated this little guy, and I can see them here. I've used clay, and I took one photo, I manipulated it slightly to take the next photo, manipulated it slightly to take the next photo, and then just kept on going, making tiny little changes all the way through as we did this. So the only blemish here is this one. For whatever reason, I either didn't focus it nicely or I didn't, um, you know, keep the lighting the same. I stepped in the way, did something odd to make the lighting color a little bit different on that. And that's going to end up showing up in the final product. So I'll leave that in as an editing note. Um, but when weird things happen, just take more pictures. Um, try and get it fixed up that way, and then you can always delete these later. So if I was worried about it, I might right-click and just remove that from the whole collection right now. But I'm going to leave it in so you can see what happens. From the Wii Video side of things, I want to bring that stuff into Wii Video uh, as part of my media. So I can do that when I initially start creating a new video, or I can do it right here from the media section on this page. So I can click on Wii Video and go to Media, I've got some uh, different folders in here already. I would just come up to the top and click on New Folder. I'm going to call this one Stop Motion. Create. And there it is. I can open that folder. And then I can go ahead and start adding media here. So if I click that right now, it gives me the Browse My Computer option. Or, of course, what I really want in this case is actually Drive. Depending on where I've taken the pictures and, and where I've placed them, uh, in this case, Drive is the best option. And I'm going to be able to go in here and find this folder. Let's see, it's sort by name. Because I know where I stashed it. Here it is, under my stop motion. There it is. 
This is where I stashed all those pictures. So I'd be able to click the first one, scroll to the bottom, hold the shift key and click the last one. And that's going to select all the photos in this entire collection here. And I go ahead and just say select and it will upload all of them immediately. I'm going to hit cancel in this moment here, just so I can show you the other way this could happen. If instead I launched a video and I had hit create new and jumped into a video, and sure, it'll be part of my project, it's fine. You can create specific projects, of course, for your stop motions if you want to. Um, and I look at my media and I'm looking at my folders, I can at this point right click if I needed to and make a new folder. Well, I did that part, so that step's taken care of. I can come to my stop motion folder, but of course, as you saw, I canceled and didn't actually put anything there. So option B, if I had jumped into my video editing process already and then went, oh, geez, I need my photos, I'm going to right click and import here will be the option that I get. So from that, I can again click my drive icon and get back into that folder that I was in previously. Let's sort you by name again. There we go. Stop motion. Click, scroll, shift, and click to grab everything. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now, of course, as you take photos on any of these devices, in this case it was a Chromebook, but if it had been a phone or a camera, whatever it was, the files will always get named sequentially. So that's perfect. Everything's exactly how I want it to be, except when I look at these, that's the last image not the first image. So what I'm going to do is click the sort button here and sort these. Let's see, descending. No, that's what I was at already. Ascending. There we go. And I'm going to have everything in the order that I want it to be in. So just like when I did my upload, I'm going to click the first image. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. I'm going to hold shift and click the last image. So I've grabbed everything I want. I'm going to click on this and drag it down onto my timeline. And I've got this track, this track. I'm seeing those green boxes. So I know I could drop it anywhere in here. Of course, this last one is my audio track. I can't drop it there. That's that's no good. So right now, I'm just going to have, stick it right there and put it against the far left edge. Boom. And now it wants to know what kind of options I'm going to do with my photo. And this is kind of an important part. Uh, of course, a photo can be on screen as long as you want it to. But if I'm animating, we need to think about how long each image is actually on screen. Screen, yeah, screen, no, on screen uh, as I am creating the video. Now, standard animation sequences or filming sequences, really, um, film is going to require 24 frames per second. So if I'm matching that kind of a sequence, it's 24 photographs for every second to create a nice smooth stream. Now I didn't take quite that many photos. I'm going to go with the seconds option in this case. Now I don't want five seconds per image. I'm going to go much shorter. I'm going to go with like 0 0.3, eh, point, yeah, three seconds and see how that works out. And I can adjust this as I go. Now immediately it took care of this for me. It realized the time frame I was going with was way too short and it unchecked the Ken Burns effect. I would have unchecked that anyway. I don't want that on there. So if I happen to have picked a time frame here where it was going to try and keep doing that, maybe let's say two seconds. Even there, it's reduced it enough. That's good. Oh, three. See, there it's an option. I don't want that checked at all. So if it was, I'd make sure to uncheck that. But thankfully, with my 0.3 setting, it just grayed that out completely. That will mess around with my transitions between images, and I don't want any kind of transition between these images. So 0.3 seconds is good. I'm going to say done. And they're very, very small here. So I mentioned this is on the video one track. I'm going to get out of the way here. And there we go. I can see now I've got video one, text one, and of course my audio one track is the one it wouldn't let me actually drop that on, which makes sense. They're all squished up right now. So I would need to use my option over in the corner here. Let's get rid of you for a moment and down at the very bottom of the screen right below where my text is at the moment I have a little zoom control here I can zoom in on these images a little bit and I'd be able to see I've got about 10 seconds worth of video right now and as I get closer and closer and closer and closer in let me just slide that a little bit there we go I can see here's my 10 second marks so that's about how much I'm using here within this frame and that's fine 
That's perfect. So what I'm going to do now, if I wanted to preview this, I can certainly do that right here in my preview window. So I'll get out of the way of that guy, hit the play button, and I can see that guy going along, flicker, 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 as it's previewing. Now, with that done, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose close gaps. This is very important for what I'm doing right now because I want this animation to be really smooth and tight and not leave any gaps or transitions or any of that in between. So I'm going to click close gaps and that's going to tighten this up a little bit. Not crazy dramatically, but enough. This time I'm going to go back and hit play and have a nice smooth or smoother animation sequence here. As smooth as I'm going to get with the amount of photos I took. And there's my little worm with eyes looking at you. So with that in there, I have to start thinking about that green screen that I mentioned and dropping in a background of things. But here's the issue. Green screen is awesome. I can double click on an image and come in and do my color keying. But the problem here with this option is that if I do that, I'm only adjusting that one single frame. I would have to do that on every single one of these photos and to take out the coloring in the background for each and every one of them if that's what I wanted to do. That's going to take way too long, especially if this is more than a 10 second clip and I've got lots and lots and lots of photos. So speed that whole process up. What I'm going to do instead is actually finalize this video. I'm going to go up to finish. I'm going to call it slow. No, not slow. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Motion. Raw. Ah. Can't type today. There we go. Set that up. I want to make sure it's in HD so I get a good quality. It is a video, of course, and I want to click this drive icon. I want to make sure that that is clicked so I get that. And down at the bottom, just sort of off screen for you, is my export button. So I hit that blue export button down the corner. And that will give me a nice option there right away. It'll export all of that right into my Google Drive account, and I'm going to be able to see that. So I can import it just like I did with all of these still images that I had created. I'm going to come back to my editor. And I actually don't need these anymore. I'm going to highlight. I'm just clicking and dragging a little box around all of these right now. And hit the delete key on my keyboard. Out of there. Um, all that's sorted out. And I'm going to end up bringing it right back into here. So I will right click and import here. Go to drive. And this time it's not going to be in that... Um, previous folder where I was looking. It's going to be in the Wii video folder. So I'm just going to type Wii and see my folder pop up right there. From there, I should be able to find my stop motion video. There it is, stop motion raw. And I'm going to select that and bring it in. Hopefully it's ready to go here. It is a very quick video, so it shouldn't take too long to sort of export and get that spit out to Google. And there we go. All right, so I can hit play. And there's my raw footage. Perfect. You can see a couple moments in there where my lighting was a little wonky, so my background didn't quite look right. Well, I'm going to drag that in now onto this timeline right here. Hey, look at that. I didn't delete everything. Let me get rid of those two. Delete. All right, so there it is. I dropped it on this text one option right now. Now, text one is a video track, so that's okay. Um, if I didn't like the name of that, if I wanted to leave text one for text, I could always click this little plus add another video track. I'll even call it here. Animation, just to be accurate, descriptive about it. And I can grab these and move them around too. If I needed to drag that, I could move this whole thing down if I needed to. I'm going to leave it alone. I just need to take this and put it right on that animation row for a moment. Click. There it is. Move down. Bloop. And what I'm going to do is find something to put on video one here as my background, essentially. So with that in mind, I'll come up to my stock media. I'll go with the beach scene here. What's a good little beach scene I can work with? Sure. Click that, drag it down onto video one. Now at the moment, of course, I haven't done anything to my green screen yet. That's still just green in the background. So when I try and preview this, I'm not seeing anything behind the worm it's just still green i'm going to double click on this uh, video clip with the worm i'm choosing the little head and shoulders icon at the top here which is for my color keying and click the little eyedropper 
that's the option that's going to let me select whatever I want. So I come over here, and I can see my little eyedropper moving around. Now there's a bit of a bright spot here, kind of a really dark spot over here. I'm going to kind of go with a color that's a bit in the middle of that. There we go. And if I get it out of my way again, you can see in the preview window, he's doing his little animation thing. Now there's a moment there where things are kind of gross. And I can see some weird shadowing and shading and lightness in the background there. I can make a little adjustment here. I can even just try again. I can hit the little trash can. If I decide, okay, there's a bright spot that's causing me some grief, I'm going to hit the eyedropper and go a little bit brighter. So it can be a bit of a closer match. There we go. I'm not getting nearly as much shadowing and shading and adjustments there. Um, but there's a little bit of wonkiness there. I can still see some speckling and some odd coloring and such. And so that's where, to make an adjustment to that, I'm going to go ahead and use this defringe option on my little slider here. I'm just going to grab the left defringe and drag that in a little bit. See if I notice any big differences here. There we go. Everything but that one sort of frame where it was just completely colored wrong. And that's why you don't want that. I'm going to have to get in if I wanted to really fix that and sort of slice that up and edit some little chunks out and um, get really, really picky about that one frame that wasn't good. But for now, I'm going to leave it alone. I can hit save and close. And what I see now is my beach in the background. Now my worm is kind of floating in the middle of the nowhere. And after I get past that nine and a half second mark, I've just got beach. So first, I'm going to drag this over here just off of the edge of my clip here and click on the beach. So it's the clip that's selected. I'm going to hit my scissors to get rid of that over here and use the little trash can to get rid of it. I can click on the beach clip and use my mouse now on the very edge to just drag that in so that the timing matches up. There we go. It just snaps to the edge. So that's done. Everything's going to be the right timing now. We like that. But what I haven't done yet here is move this guy around because he's just floating in the middle of nowhere. Now, maybe depending on the background you've got, that works just fine. You can leave it alone. But as an extra step here, I'm going to double click on my worm and not mess with my coloring or my background necessarily. I'm going to actually come to the very first tab, the transform tab. This is one that lets me rotate it and flip it around, stretch it and make it bigger. But in this case, all I'm going to do is drag you over here and put you kind of on that high bit of sand there so you look good. Now I can go back and I can watch this guy and I'll see that he's sort of on the sand and he's kind of creeping up, taking a look at things. And just to sort of help clean things up, since I know it's this corner that that little splotch shows up right about there. There he is. One of the other tools I have across the top here is hit the crop tool. So this is going to allow me to chop some of my video up a little bit. Well, I'm going to do that right now just to get rid of that chunk. There we go. At the bottom, I can save changes. So I've literally just chopped off that section of video that was causing me a bit of grief there. So rather than getting in and being really particular about it, I can just do it this way. And now I have my little animated worm in the corner. Beautiful. So that is your information in terms of just creating a stop motion and dropping in a background. If I was completely finished already, I would come up and hit that blue finish button. Get rid of him. Finish button, just like I did previously when I needed to export the um, single frames into one little video. But from this point as well, I could go ahead and start dropping in, you know, different animated text options. If I had some titles and things I wanted to drop in, if this was, you know, something that required some dialogue, I could go to my media and hit my narrate button and start narrating dialogue over top of whatever it is that's going on. Bring in sound effects. You know, if there's different scenes happening here, I can bring in other clips and use my my transitions in between here and start transitioning between all those different scenes possibly. It just depends on what you want to create and how you're putting this all together. And that's why when you are back on the main screen, you'd probably create a project folder, especially if you're going to need to create various different little snippets and scenes and such, and eventually put them all together as one final video project. But just in terms of taking some photos and put, stitching them together into a stop motion, this is what you're going to need to know is 
get that my media bring in all those individual clips first finish it so it exports as one video clip and then from there go ahead and bring that video clip right back into we video so that you can mess with your green screen and drop in your other background images and bring in whatever other text elements and things you want to fancy things up even further so Lots of nice options and flexibility with Wii Video, whether you want to keep it real simple, maybe even just save it as an animated GIF at the end, or if you want to get crazy complicated and bring in all those extra features. So, have fun with Wii Video, creating your stop motions.